Hi folks, um, this video is designed to be an addendum to my previous video that I just got through uh, working on uh, with respect to simple and parallel mediation. So I'm going to include a link to that other video underneath the video description because that's where most of my uh, discussion about concepts with mediation and how to interpret analyses and so forth, um, that's where it's located. Uh, this video is basically designed to show you how you can use the process syntax in order to generate the output that is uh, provided in that other video. So once again, uh, we're going to be focusing in this video on using process syntax to generate the outputs uh, from models one, two, and three from that previous video. And you can find uh, the link to that previous video underneath the video description. So uh, the first uh, model that we are going to generate uh, results from is this one right here, where we have a task orientation uh, serving as a predictor of intention to continue sport with autonomous motivation as specified as a potential mediator uh, between task orientation and the intention variable. Hi, everyone. In this video, I'm going to uh, basically provide an addendum to a video that I just completed on using the process macro for performing simple and parallel mediation uh, using SPSS. So in that previous video, I utilized a drop-down menu uh, system uh, in order to carry out the analyses. And this one, I'm just gonna be focusing in on showing you how to uh, generate the same results using uh, process syntax. So I'm not going to be going through this video, uh, going through a lot of results and everything, uh, interpreting it. I, all that's reserved for the other video, which I'm going to link underneath this video description. So you you can go there uh, to get all the details on the more on the specifics of the different models that are being tested and the output and so forth. Uh, but this one is again just going to be focusing in on how to generate the uh, the models that were uh, discussed in that previous video. So before opening up SPSS and showing you the syntax in real time, I'm just going to walk you through the different models and the syntax that we're going to be using. So the first was a, a simple mediation model. This is what it looked like. And to run the process syntax, um, this is the code uh, that you could use in order to generate uh, the, the output associated with that model one. So just keep in mind that uh, when you're uh, using the uh, process syntax in order to uh, run the analysis, you have to activate the macro first before you can use uh, the process command, which is uh, this right here. If you don't, then uh, SPSS is not going to recognize that command and you're going to get an error message. So I'll show you how to activate process and then we'll type this in uh, in order to uh, demonstrate um, the, the process, so to speak. So as you're looking at this, you'll see that we have uh, the uh, consequent variable, which is y, set equal to the name of that variable. So in the data set, the name of the intention to continue sport variable is uh, c-o-n-t-i-n. Uh, then we have a forward slash followed by uh, the x, which is set equal to task, and that's the task orientation variable. So x is referring to the antecedent variable. Then we have another forward slash, then followed by an M set equal to A-U-T-O-N. That's the name in the, um, the data set. That's just autonomous motivation. And then we have a forward slash, and then we have our model number, and we set that equal to four. So we start with Y, then X, then M, and then we are going to specify our model number. You'll see right here we've got uh, C-O-N-F is equal to 95. That's just basically referring to the type of confidence interval uh, that you want. So in the standard regression results, the, the uh, confidence interval uh, is just based on a normal theory method. But when it comes to the test of the indirect effect of task orientation on intention to continue uh, by way of our autonomous um, uh, motivation variable, uh, then we're using a bootstrap 95% confidence interval. So that confidence interval will also be 95%. We have a, another forward slash followed by 
the boot option. So we set that equal to uh, 5,000 right here. This is the default number uh, if you're using the drop down menu system. You can obviously increase that if you want to, um, but um, we're just going to leave it that way. We have a forward slash, and then if we want uh, a completely standardized uh, output with this model, we can type in stand, set that equal to one. So in addition to having the unstandardized regression parameters, you can also have standardized regression uh, coefficients as well, just by specifying stand equals one. Then we have a forward slash, and then if you want the total effects model, you can type in total equals one. Then a forward slash, and you'll see right here it's got seed, and I have this set at one, two, three, four, five. So when you're running your analysis, the bootstrap results um, using the drop down menu system um, basically uses a random seed in order to perform the uh, to begin the bootstrapping process. And what that can do is um, your bootstrap confidence intervals, the lower and the upper bounds, can kind of shift from analysis to analysis. So you could do the same analysis on the same data in the same exact way, um, you know, one minute, then do it again, and then do it again. And you could end up with a confidence interval, um, lower and upper bounds that slightly differ from analysis to analysis. Um, that's just the nature of bootstrapping because you're essentially drawing random samples out of your data while you're computing uh, you know, the, the, these confidence intervals. So if you, want, can, you know, if you want the same analysis to be repeated or the same intervals to show up in a subsequent analysis, let's say today you, uh, you run your analysis and you, wanna, um, and you don't want the, uh, and then let's say you save your results and uh, print out a copy um, on some paper or whatever, and then you come back tomorrow and you realize you've lost that and you want, and you have to rerun your analysis if you want the results to be exactly the same as they are today, you would want to use the same seed number. Well, so this is just an example of a seed number I'm just using right here, which is one, two, three, four, five. You could use whatever, but it, when you use that, then in a subsequent analysis on the same data with the same uh, specifications, the bootstrap confidence intervals should be the same. So at any rate, I've set this for seed for one, two, three, four, five, and then we follow all that up with a period at the very end. So that's basically uh, the breakdown of our syntax right here. So next we'll proceed with a simple mediation with some control variables included. So here uh, was the second example uh, that we utilized. And in this particular case, uh, just kind of uh, the, the breakdown, if you will, um, we'll go down to the process command right here. Um, and then we have Y set equal to the consequent. We have our forward slash, then X, our antecedent, set equal to task, uh, then forward slash, then M set equal to uh, A-U-T-O-N, uh, or auton, if you will. Uh, then forward slash, now you'll notice I've got the option for covariates. So we type in COV that represents that we're, uh, we're going to be typing in the covariate names. So we set that equal to the names of the covariates that we're including. And so these are the covariates from our data uh, set, so which was um, ego orientation and controlled motivation. Then we have forward slash, again, model four, uh, forward slash confidence interval right there. And really everything else is exactly the same as before. So the only difference between this model and the previous model is this part right here where we are specifying uh, the covariates for our analysis. The last model was a parallel mediation. This is what it looked like. And so in terms of the um, syntax to run the analysis, again, there's our process uh, command, Y, X, and M right there. Now, because we have two mediators in this analysis, then uh, we, we would have for our M option right there, we set that equal to the names of each of the mediators. So we have the auton mediator and control mediator right there. And then everything else after that is exactly the same. Uh, if we wanted to, if we happen to have a situation where we had covariates that we wanted to include, we would also have another forward slash COV equals and then the names of the covariates, just like kind of what we had uh, in that last bit that I was just showing you. But for this bit right here, 
the difference between this model and the first simple uh, mediation model uh, was the fact that this model contains two mediators as opposed to one mediator. And because of that, this part of the syntax uh, is now going to con contain the names of both of the mediators. So let's go ahead and open up SPSS and we'll activate the process macro and generate our results. Okay, so really quickly, uh, once you've downloaded that process macro, it's going to be in a zip file. Uh, I'm just going to briefly open this up, go to Windows Explorer right there. And inside this, this is the location of the, of the process macro. So if you go to the custom dialog builder, which I have another video on, you can install that the dialog uh, builder box, if you will, uh, if you want to use a drop down menu system. But to use the process macro uh, with syntax, this is the syntax file that contains the macro. So, you know, you can basically save it um, on a different drive on your computer or whatever, and then you can open it up when you're running your analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of click out of this, go back under, this is where I have uh, this stored right here. So, um, you know, at any rate, this is our data set right here. And uh, I'm just going to go back into that folder. I'm going to go to syntax right here, open syntax. And this is that file I was just showing you. I'm going to click on open. So here's our syntax file. I'm going to right click and then click on run all. So the first thing is, is that to use that syntax, you've got to activate the macro. If it is not active in memory, uh, when you when you run your analysis um, using that process command, it's going to not work. So I'm going to run all. And so it takes a few seconds uh, in order to activate it. So now it says process is ready uh, for use. So now we can use our syntax in order to specify our models and generate our output. So I'm going to just kind of open up a new syntax file right here and get started uh, specifying our first model. So um, I'm just, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, I'll just kind of create a little comment here. So I'm just going to type an asterisk and I'll just say uh, example one. Not that this is necessary, but it's helpful. Uh, so now I'll type in process and then Y equals and then the name of our, um, our, our consequent variable, which is uh, the uh, intention to continue. So it's C-O-N-T-I-N, that's as it's spelled in uh, our data set. So then forward slash, then X equals task, then forward slash M equals auton right there, then forward slash model equals four, uh, forward slash C-O-N-F equals 95, forward slash boot equals 5,000, forward slash stand equals one, forward slash total equals one, and then forward slash seed equals one, two, whoops, one, two, three, four, five, period. So now when we highlight this and click on the green button, it'll take a second, but it's going to um, generate our results. So these are the results that we had previously generated uh, using the drop down menu system. The, um, the effect I was talking about with respect to the bootstrap confidence intervals uh, is, down, uh, is down here. So I'll kind of highlight this for you. So there's the bootstrap uh, confidence interval for the indirect effects. And like I said, if we run this analysis again using the same seed, we would end up with the same values for that. Uh, if we uh, just let, use a, a random seed, then basically what will happen is, is that from analysis to analysis, those values may shift somewhat, which uh, folks uh, oftentimes finds as annoying. Uh, so at any rate, let's go ahead and look at our next um, model. So we'll do example two. And then we'll type in, pro, uh, actually, I'm just going to kind of modify what we have up here in the interest of time. So I'm going to copy this and paste it down here. Um, so in this particular case right here, uh, we're going to add after the uh, M, we're going to type in uh, forward slash then uh, C-O-V and, and then set that equal to ego and control and then forward slash. So everything else is exactly the same, but this is where we're adding in those two covariates right here. So just using the COV uh, option, 
set that equal to the names of the covariates, the names again being the same ones as in our original uh, data set. So I'll highlight this, click on the green button. And there you go. So now we have our output. And as you can see right here, uh, it's registering those two variables as covariates during our analysis. So now let's do the last one. We're just going to go ahead and go into uh, here. Uh, we'll say example three. And in this particular case, I'm going to get rid of all of, I mean, I'm going to copy this. Or actually, I'm just going to copy this right here. And where it says M for mediator, we're going to add in that second mediator. So in this particular case, uh, the second mediator was control. And that's really all there was to it. There's not anything else. We, we didn't include any covariates, but if we had, we would have used the COV command in this line. But uh, basically, that's all there is to it when we highlight this and run it. you'll see that uh, now looking at it, we have over here, it's got M1 and M2. So that's basically all there is to it in terms of running um, our analyses um, using the process syntax. I will say that using being able to use the syntax uh, can be very helpful. One reason why, quite frankly, is, is that now you can actually document what you've done and keep a, a running log rather than having to, uh, you know, kind of go back and if you wanted to, uh, you know, revisit some analyses or whatever and having to rerun using the drop down menu. Now you've got this saved if you do save it. Uh, and so you can go back and use this. Um, you know, another uh, benefit is, is that, you know, for more complex models that don't actually have templates, there is, uh, there are options in um, this discussed in Hayes's book on how to specify more custom models. Uh, so this is actually a nice uh, uh, entryway into, um, you know, being able to do that uh, later on. So that uh, pretty much wraps up this video presentation, and I appreciate you watching.